弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Today we will、um, continue with our chapter four of Liao Fan, so the last part. So just to give a full context before we go in depth,、uh, Liao Fan is all about changing destiny, as you can see. Master Ching Kong gave it a name, changing destiny, because if we just say Liao Fan, people don't know if they didn't read it. So it's all about changing destiny. It's about how you、um, reform yourself, how you improve yourself, and the last part is about after doing all this. Or while you're doing all this,、uh, what are the right attitude you should have?、Um, having knowing that you can change your destiny, like chapter one said, and having know that we need to start by reforming ourselves, stopping ourselves from committing all that、uh, deeds that will leak our merits out. That means whatever you do, if you have not reformed fully, thoroughly, or if you're still committing,、uh, we call it evil karmas in speech, action, and thoughts.、Uh, whatever you do will be leak. It's like a bucket with a hole that will keep leaking, no matter how much water you、um, put on top、uh, inside. So on that ground,、uh, we move on to merits. So after you reform, then you understand that you need to accumulate merits, and it's all about sincerity,、uh, true heart, and do it out of your heart, not just copying others or imitating someone else、uh, for the sake of fame or prestige or praise. So you do it because it's right, and that's the best form of.、Um, obviously, with that, you will be more、um, aware of what is right and wrong.、Uh, what Uh, it's more than what it meets the eye. It's more than what it meets the eye. So nothing is always on the surface. But、um, the point is not to tell you to think too much. It's just to understand, assess the situation properly,、uh, be patient, hold, and only then you can perfect your merits. So it's not just simply you know、uh, do good. It's、um, while doing good you must. Be aware of the implication of your good. Is it long-lasting? Is it、um, how to say? Is it come out of your heart? And have your actions truly benefited the parties involved?、Uh, not just simply at that one moment, but in the long, long run. So you have to、um, apply a bit more thoughts towards the good deeds. Even though everyone's doing good deeds, but、uh, everyone doing good deeds for different reasons. And we need to make sure the reason is right. You also need to make sure that it's、uh, it's coming from the heart. And if even if we just started with that, you know, finding our way throughout this life, how do we accumulate good deeds,、uh, eradicate all that evil habits? We need to start、um, how to say、uh, doing it. And by doing it. From whatever you can, donation, volunteering,、uh, you grow your understanding. And obviously, we need to have this kind of、uh, session or this kind of、uh, books that tell us、um, their experiences of、uh, doing good deeds. The uh, re- uh, uh, the theories, you know, like a map, so that we don't walk to the wrong path, thinking we're doing good, but we're actually committing negative karma that will cause more misery. Like I've been doing good deeds for twenty, forty years, but why am I still miserable like this, or、uh, why am I still having so much issues? And that might be because the medicine is not applied correctly. The way we're doing it is not truly good, or not fully good, and hence you will not get the full result. So, using、uh, Mr. Yu meets Kitchen God, we talk in detail about this. What appears to be good in more. Concrete way because he uses his own life as the example. Liao Fan is more、uh, orderly because he's he's not、uh, that dramatic compared to Mr. Yu. Because Mr. Yu's life is very dramatic. I think I will talk about that next round. 
everyone can see the contrast it's so stark because he 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 has done something that is very obviously not kind when someone exposed because we can't read the heart but the heavens can people with attainment of enlightenment can so they see the heart is not real and the, they, they all they do is only the puppet surface so because of that all the good deeds are not full so this is what all the chapter three is about. It's about a, a lot of times we thought we're doing good deeds. We thought this is good. But what we see, uh, we're not seeing the reality, the, the truth behind it. We only see the surface, superficial part. So knowing all that, understanding all that, obviously we're still learning. And they uh, often talk about the 10 things you can do to help people. Uh, I say I picked up the important one like trying to protect the Dharma because Dharma is the eyes of the or of the uh, beings, sensu- uh, all beings, not just sentient beings, all beings. Without eyes, you can't walk properly. You will keep hitting poles or you might even divert it to the path of no return in a way. So uh, that's why we need to protect Dharma. That's why we have all this printing distribution of Dharma Sutra. And more important, we have uh, like our Master Ching Kong, our teacher Master Ching Kong speech we propagate so that everyone knows what's going on and how to cultivate uh, to their own level. And obviously, um, this goes beyond just Buddhism. It can be, you know, one of those um, uh, very public health or public um, uh, decency and all that stuff, you know, like morality and virtues, general decency. All these things can be uh, talk, uh, propagated. The more the better, the merrier, you know talk about moderation, uh, environment, we're talking about more modern things like environmental uh, conscious uh, or being uh, being more, how to say, a wholesome mind, a whole-minded, not just focus on profits. Uh, think about ecologies. All these are very good because they're protecting our environment, and our heart. But most importantly, is the heart because without a, a clean, um, purified heart, everything we do will be tainted. No matter how pure the Water is when it goes into the cup full of mud, it will always be mudded. So that's why we need to reform and we need to learn how to accumulate merits. So other than dharmas, we can talk about you know being love, uh, being loving because uh, we didn't talk too in, too much in terms of what good can we do. We talk about what is good, what is not good. So I'll spare a bit of time just to talk about this. Um, being a loving heart. So in our case, we can say vegetarianism. In the sense, it's coming out of loving heart. Uh, a lot of people ask me about uh, why you, you know, be a vegetarian and why do you, you know, push. Uh, because I never, I'm never a person who sit there and say I'm vegetarian. I only do that when I eat and I ask for diet. And a lot of people are curious and ask why, and I just say because I don't want to kill. That's how simple it is. Um, people might do it for the reason of health and all that. But this is also a, a, a way to show that you are you are not involving in the killing is, you know, adopting a diet that does not involve it. And uh, everyone has a different level of acceptance to this. Some people just can't because of cultures or religious or it's part of their identity and stuff. Uh, Master Ying Guang do always advise people to gradually adopt this because it's not a matter of health only. It's Health is small because we all will pass away. And no matter how good your health, you still pass away after 100 years old. It's the thing that waits, awaits you after that, that karma debt that you have to pay. We're talking about cause and effect here, and I cannot shy away from this topic. Um, this, the, why is it the merit? Because if it's not merit, it's fault, definitely. There's no, there is in the middle, we call it Chinese called Wu Ji Ye, but this is definitely not in the middle. It's either you have a merit or you have a fault. Because, um, we are in a society where everyone is um, properly, you know, I mean, in, at least in this part of the world, and we have supplies, agricultural society, we have uh, foods, we don't need to do that e- e- eating and killing, uh, we're not hunting. So if you can adopt that, uh, it's good for karma and it's good for your heart. But in a more broader sense, beyond just diet, so Ai Jing Chun Xing, it means that you need to have, um, how to say, leave a little bit of space for other people. Be considerate. Um, like when you have uh, put yourself in the other people's shoes, 
uh, as in maybe when you in the late night if you live in an apartment don't smoke on the balcony which is what happened and don't speak loudly on the phone that's also a little bit of um, empathy in there empathy comes out from compassion which is a loving heart the basis of all religions and all creeds and brotherhoods without loving heart there's no family there's no friendships there's no country nothing love for your nation love for your people that's why you have a nation you have a community so always have that loving heart do not get um do not get numb by the technologies desires or that we in chinese go sung su chen ma or that um impulses or that uh sensory um indulgence do not get blinded by that uh keep that pure heart in there also we talk about giving to do good you need to start give that's why in uh, bodhisattva's um six paramitas one of them is um the first step is to giving paramitas and uh, you get started by giving away what you have what you um beyond what you need basically your basic food your basic shelter your basic warmth um air bill and all that necessity was covered and what beyond that you need to we all start learning to give and it's common in all religion in all communities because that is the first step of how one um how to say uh, accumulate merits they don't do it for the sake of merit they do it and got merit naturally because of that um as you can see a lot of wealthy countries they are usually have a habit of gift and that's why they are help they are wealthy there's a reason behind it they are not wealthy for the sake of wealth they don't just got it from nowhere nothing happens without a reason the reason why you're born in a wealthy country the reason why this country is wealthy is because they give so marriage are very important it preserves your it makes your life less miserable it makes your life better happier and what else do we have respect something like that something that is um call it oh yeah respect yeah, everyone knows respect not really but respect uh your elders respect the people who is um in charge of something like your boss or respect um uh, people who are in positions of um making things because this respect is not because you're trying to get um in favor of them or anything the respect is because you understand that they've been through a lot more than you are by respecting them you understand that you are um, doing the same thing for yourself no one no one no one dislike being respectful uh no one is a respectful person uh, you can be blunt and honest but you're still respectful uh being respectful means that you 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 have a nice um distance with other people and um it keeps the relationship going and in future when you are elder in position of power in position of uh doing important stuff or stuff like that you are having that high position you also ex- uh, hope people would respect you so this thing comes around and goes around people uh, in chinese we also can say gui in a sense um not just simply chun uh, chun jing like people who become prestigious gui because they are uh, the person who respect for others if you saw someone who are appear as uh how to say very arrogant and they still got high precision don't be doubtful of this law because law and cause and effect is not about one life it's about three uh, past present future they all have many past just like this earth before this earth there are many 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 big bangs and universe before that it's not ridiculous to think about that right the scientists will also think about okay before the big bang there's another big bang or something like that and after you after this existent there will be many 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 that comes after so 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 does our human life because we're part of the universe it's not some new age stuff it is a reality our life is a continuum you can't just say it breaks into when you die it's gone like a candle off is one of the this is one of the reason why we need dharma <laughs> this is a very serious misconception of the of the current world especially so back to the point um being respectful a person who got respectful a person who always be respectful people will always be respected by everyone and even though they don't get 
position in in terms of part uh, governmental or in CEO company. Those are very narrow. They are if a person is being respected in the community, like even though they have no titles or anything, but they were treated like a royal in a sense that they were respected so much because they are themselves respectful others. And if you saw someone who was being respected uh, or in a position of uh, worthy of uh, demand of respect, even though that person's moral and virtue is not that good, it's because the past life they have cultivated respectful heart. And hence they got the they got what they saw. It's fair. It's just that in this life they are not aware of this. That's why Dharma is important. They're not aware of this. Their eyes are not open. So they thought, you know, I was born uh, with a wealthy family and all that, so I should be above everyone else. They don't understand I was born into here because I cultivate so many lives of giving just to get where I am. If people can think that, he's Bodhisattva. <laughs> so that's why we need to um, we need to be aware of this. Okay. So why do we need to respect elders? Because they are the one who pass down the knowledge, pass down the foundation, and it also reminds the elder themselves to be worthy of respect. So don't do something that will that will cause more harm towards next generation, which is what not, not happening for our generation now, according to Master Ching Kong, as you can see. His era, which is 90 years old, 1920s, until now, they're all forgotten about all that, or it's gradually forgotten about virtues and morals. And it becomes more and more prone to scientific development and all that, just focusing on the outside without the without the human uh, development insight. So it becomes uh, naturally uh, chasing after wealth for the sake of wealth without thinking about leaving, you know, what we call right now the environmental movement, leaving something for next generation. So in case we think about nowadays people, you know, young people don't feel respectful towards them. I mean, we will be elder one day. We think about, am I worthy of respect? Have we done something deserving of respect from them? Um, back then, there was a concept of you have to be respect to us and all that. But right now, you know, to gain respect, to be worthy of respect, we need to do something that are truly benefit to them or do our job as a father, act like a father, take care of the family. As a mother, take off, uh, act like a mother. Or people who do their job who fulfill their basic duty, obviously with uh, respect, uh, being um, devoted to their relationships uh, as a husband and wife and father and son, uh, parents and ch child, children, um, teachers and students. If they all do their job in Confucius, we call it the five relationships, Ulun, naturally the respect will form. You don't have to ask them to respect. You, you can, you can. When, when they were young, we talked about uh, you need to be respectful for, to people. Uh, you need to uh, all, all that movements. You know, you, you, your mannerism need to be taken care of. Those are mechanical. But what this mechanical trying to achieve cannot be replaced by a genuine respect that comes out from the heart. Those, those, those mannerisms. They are mechanical way. Or not mechanical, they are way to express your love and respect towards your parents. This is what ancient Chinese did. Like they have all that set of rights and customs. The reason um, it might get a little bit more, uh, how say, off track towards the end of the, the the imperial era, but the origins of it is you love that person, you respect that person, like your uh, beloved grandpa, grandma, and the way you show respect uh, is, you know. You can imagine that if you love someone so much, uh, you give them a very deep bow or or a deep hug, stuff like that. Obviously, Chinese don't hug in the ancient times. And so we give a deep bow and deep that. You feel very natural and you feel like you're expressing that sort of energy to them. And they they themselves sitting there, they will feel you know touched and all that. So it all have to come from the heart. Obviously, towards the end, or towards the later era, which is closest to us, people get more and more restricted on the outside and forgot what the core is about. And the core is about you expressing yourself. So respect in this term is not just mannerism. Mannerism is just the face. Respect from the heart means everyone's doing their job. Like if you saw a, uh, how to say, uh, a cleaner, 
uh, cleaner cleans the job earnestly. Use the clean cloth every time. Takes care of every single cleaning product. Take care of the the windows. Take care of the basins. And they use clean cloth every time, especially around the kitchen area. They were sensitive towards the needs of the people. They were like, okay, I use the clean cloth. I don't use the cloth to wipe that wipe the toilet to wipe the kitchen. So he think if you saw a cleaner like that, that cleaner is worthy of respect as much as you respect your boss. Mm. So a parents doing their job, a husband and a wife doing their job. Obviously, we can't define in the old times, women have stay at home. That's that's not the era. What I'm saying is there's got to be someone to do the job. It better be wife, man and wife, which one? Like if man staying at home, taking care of the children and wife goes and earn the money, that's fine. As long as someone's doing the job, taking care of the children, educating it, doesn't matter. Don't give it to nanny. It's not fair for the children. They need you, the parents. So as long as people doing their role, uh, fulfilling the role, they will be earning the respect. This is all it's all about. It's not about getting big money, getting big position. Because I can't emphasize this more because the whole Dizigui and whole um, whole Dizigui by Master Ching Kong, why he wants us to talk about this, you know, uh, standards of being a good person is because we're lacking this part in our life. So we can talk about all the big sutras, all the big theories, all the big science, high philosophies. But when it boils down to the most simplest ingredient, uh, we call it love. And when you have love, you would not show it purely from emotion. You would you would use respect to convey that love. Because if love without respect, it just becomes um, spoiled. Um, whether between husband and wife, whether between parents and child. Um, respect gives that beautiful distance that needed for everyone to uh, grow properly, healthily. Because we are a mix of emotions and rational, like they are together. And we cannot have without emotions. It's like without colors. But if it's just too much colors like disco, without order, which is what we call rationality or wisdom, it becomes disco, which is very fuzzy. It, it becomes messy, which is what happened now. Everyone just do what they want and it becomes too messy. There's no, there's nothing for this next generation to follow. You don't have to restrict their path, but you need to give them a path to, to choose, right? Don't, 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 don't mess up their life. Uh, like in 80s and 90s, uh, 70s and 80s, we have that experimental period. I can see their costume and all that. This is personal opinion, by the way, but I have to say that because it reflects of our societies. Uh, like after that very strict 40s and 50s, I can see all that, the way they wear and their mannerism is very stringent. And then 60, they start to liberate. 70, 80 becomes so weird. You can see the way they wear the stuff and the hair. And then 90s were like, okay, that's enough. Way too much. And then back back to now, everyone's normalizing a little bit. So what I'm trying to say is um, there is always a balance uh, in the middle. And we trying to, uh, I trying to express this, uh, using this to express what is respect. It's the balance. Balance of your love for that person at the same time the mannerism you need to have. So going back to the main point, because I diverge a bit too much, but um, uh, but uh, think about life like that. Think about I mean society like that. I mean, um, to have a happy life, you can't have an unhappy community, an unhappy world. Uh, right now is the very messy world and messy in terms of multi-dimensional threat. No longer in the old days of, you know, a community is very solid and you can go back and forth back to everywhere. You know, Pre-World War II, use World War II as a, as a big drawing line. Before that, you know, the communications are not too much. Everyone's still got that nice little village they can fall back to and people are simpler. There's no iPad, iPhone, not even television. After World War II, they have television. So, um, it becomes very simple. Yes, they still have wars and all that, they, but they're, they're still very, how to say, um, very, very, very uh, close knitted. So after World War II, all the technologies give it easier access to everything, which is good, but without wisdom to control it, to write over it. Right now, we don't have enough of that. It becomes, the servant becomes the master. In, I'm using a Zen word. The master becomes the servant. 
master is us, the one who created or the one who meant to use this technology for the good. But we become the servant because our desires override our intentions of using this tech for the betterment of everyone. They are a gleam of light and hope in the middle of this that was happening. Uh, people use that really like medical and all that for the advancement. But most of the time we're using for weaponry or uh, entertainment, they are way too addictive. Back then you have to go out to disco and pub to have fun. Right now you don't have to. You stay at home, one computer, one decent $1,000, Aussie dollar. I'm talking from experience. Computer, it's all you need to get indulgence for years and get wasted of this life. So dangerous. It's exactly what Master Ching Kong has been saying. So going back to here is that helping yourself, you will always need to help others in order to help yourself. And to help others, you need to get yourself sorted first. What do you want? Where are you going? Um, what is the current state of your life? Or in terms of personally, your habit, have you cultivated that uh, habit that is uh, uh, available? to accept missions, bigger missions or bigger responsibilities that will affect more people. If you haven't cultivated that good habit or good foundation for that, which is as a personal virtues and also a, a worldview that are broad and inclusive and at the same time rational and understanding not to extreme, then we can't, we can't lead the world to, to the direction that we want. Uh, so it all relies on Dharma and respect among every single layer of relationships, up and down, down and up and down, down and up, left and right as well, like siblings, friends, colleagues. Um, those things are there. Doesn't matter what kind of ideology you have, anarchism or anything. That's old days. It, it will always be there. There will always be someone who needs to lead the rest, unless everyone is Bodhisattvas and Buddha. In Pure Land, everyone is student and teacher. They still have a one Buddha leaving, but everyone's like equal. They have true democracy. They don't need to democratize anything because they're all wise people. They don't do stupid stuff like vandalism or creating uh, segregation or racism. They don't. Everyone looks like Amitabha. That is the world that you can talk about equality, guys. But right now, in this reality, in this mud, we need to have orders, and to have orders, we need to have law. But beyond just law, we need to have a proper human relationship to carry out. Because far away, you think beyond the law, there's human humanity in there, and love and parents and and all that bonds that we need to take care of right now, uh, before next generation comes up and takes over the realm. Because it will be miserable for them if we didn't put a good foundation for them. So we need to work on this. So let's continue. Um, no killing. Yep. They often talk about basically what I'm trying to say. Vegetarianism, trying to reduce a consumption of meat. Uh, there's a lot of people with a lot of reasons. This is a clam. They don't have sentience. Uh, this is cow. They were born to kill. We don't talk to them like that. We don't need to argue with them. If they argue, just follow what they say and just say, okay, okay, cool. Don't need to argue. Just talk to people who are willing to accept this. If they don't really accept, it's fine. You can't force people. Uh, everyone has their own choice. And we, our job is to tell them. Like right, how, right now, I'm doing my job. I'm through this recording and all that. I'm just telling whoever would listen. Vegetarianism is not just about health. I believe that one is too narrow. It's about saving the world. And to save the world, uh, there are many facets. The most important is the heart. Eating a non-meat diet doesn't mean automatically you're a saint because there are dictators who are vegetarian as well. I'm not going to mention the name, but using that as a method to express your commitment to be empathy towards a fellow sentient beings who are also suffering like you do or more than you are, like the animal realms, they are suffering a lot more than you are. They're born to kill. And even though you don't eat it, someone else wishes to eat it. But that someone else will have to be one of the animals in, in next generation. I'm talking very bluntly. Some way or the other, even they are not animal in human realms, they will have to encounter wars. You know why war happening? Because of killing. 
You know why wars in Europe happening? Because of all that pigs and cows were killed. You can take my word. I can be very confident that because I heard from Master Ching Kong and I believe that he don't just say out of his, it's according to Buddha Sutra. And those also saying, if you don't want to have war in this world, shut down all the butcheries. If you want to have no wars in this world, no conflicts, no killing among people in this world, then unless we have no, we no longer everywhere else in the world, no longer hear any butchery sound, like the sound of the animal wailing. Otherwise, there will be inevitable. There will always be war. This is how war one happened. War two happened. This is how invasion of uh, this country and that country happened, guys. It's that serious, guys. It's that serious. And um, this is a bit far, but very important, very close to us. So importance of merit goes beyond just simply having a happy life. Because what is a happy life, right? How can you be happy when everyone else is miserable? How can you be happy when you, your own family is happy, but you have to worry about other people breaking in your house? That's not happy. It's fake. It's, it's called having opium, trying to drug yourself to happiness. That's not. Uh, the real happiness is everyone stable. Yes, they're all... They will not all be very rich. They will not all be Warren Buffett. They will not all be Bill Gates. It's impossible. But because everyone's karma is different, they create a different karma. But at least everyone cultivate five precepts, 10 uh, meritorious deeds. If they have this, which is about 10 commandments in Christianity, same thing uh, in Islamic as well. They have all that rules that follows. That's the reason why it's there. It's to create a proper stable society where Everyone knows their place and they also, with this Lao Fan, they teach us you don't have to be bounded to one part. You can improve your standings. If you're not aiming for pure land, even in human and heaven realm is good for people who are not going there. You want to be human? You want to be a uh, heavenly realm? Cultivate this. Cultivate these five precepts, ten uh, meritorious deeds. And these deeds are coming from these teachings. Do not killing, uh, do not stealing, do not sexual misconduct. It's very serious, number three. Um, uh, do not lie. Beyond lie, there are slanders, there are lancers, slanders, uh, harsh words, um, lying, big lying, small lying, big lying, I'm a saint, I'm an arahant, I'm Buddha. In terms of actual attainment, no, I'm not. I'm naturally a Buddha, but I'm not attaining that yet. I'm a normal people. So that's a big lie. Small lies, small lies, white lies, and all kind of lies. Sometimes you need to lie in order to save life. That's fine. So I'm, I'm giving you an overview, what we're a little bit of annotation. And the fifth one is the no intoxicants. That one is to prevent you to break the four precepts. Those things need to be talked in this section because they are all about trying to get yourself preserved where you are right now instead of falling further. Let's not talk about uh, next life. Talk about right now, your, your condition, your, your state of life with COVID and all that disaster waiting outside because of the karma we commit. Um, to preserve your life, preserve your property, to preserve your family's life and property, to preserve your friend's life and property, this is the way. Not Second Amendment. That's not enough. <laughs> I'm talking about in that context. But what I'm talking about is those are passive. These are active. These are active because you're creating a society where everyone follows this um, common creed, common humanities, no killing and, and all that. It might sound very simple, but wow, we commit killing in terms of animal or you, we can go even deeper. You commit killing by causing people to be angry. It's also a form of killing. Now, hai zhongsen, it means you cause them to be annoyed you make them um, very annoyed, uh, make them unhappy, uh, unstable. They make their emotions up and down. That's not right. No bodhisattvas causing annoyance to the beings. Every time a person who cultivates the path where they are, they will always cause happiness around them, true happiness. They will even awaken part of the people who are ready around them. That's the kind of person we should be, inspiring, inspiring person. So after all this context, right, just to give you a context of how 
big this is, how important this is, how crossed different religion creeds it is. No matter what where you are, you need if you are human, you need to follow this uh, lessons. Now, how do we preserve all these achievements? Like if you have done that, say you have actually achieved that height where you truly inside you're real, you're cultivating, outside you're doing good, and obviously you do not attach to it. You learn not to attach to it. And all that meritorious reform has been done. How do you preserve them? How do you keep them growing and glowing without fa fa falling? So this is where we talk about humility. So chapter four is about humility. And he begins in the very iconic words in I Ching. I believe in the West, everyone loves I Ching. Uh, I think not everyone, but I Ching is well known because it talks about talks about laws of life, like laws of like just like we're talking about laws of physics, you know, reaction, action, and reaction, and all that. So this is the same thing. It's an observation of how things works in terms of natural and human, uh, natural and natural, uh, human and human, so human and natural, and 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 all that relations. It's about relations, how it changed, how dynamic it is. So in there, he picked a phrase. He saw the heavens will always reward the one who are humble and always take away from those who are full of themselves. It sounds like Bible. I read Bible yesterday as well, and they did talk about that. You know, the God will only uh, uh, reward the humbles and take away the people who are full of themselves. So same thing. It, it, it's a law. Of, it's an iron law. Everyone knows. Everyone should know. And in the earth, we're talking about physical one, the earth, all right, will always, um, how to say, make something that piles like a mountain back into the common ground. So look at the, you know, look at the mud, they will always flow to the, to the ground, all right, not the other way around. So this is how it works in our world. That means if you are, uh, if you are hard as deep as a valley, you can take even more, Shi Huai Roku, you can take more in. If you're already high like a mountain in there, you, no one can fit anything more in there. So humility is the way to preserve it. Keep, uh, keep a low profile all the time. Always have that low profile. Don't do anything flashy unnecessarily unless it, it gives a proper message. Otherwise, don't. Not just the sky and the land. Heaven is in the sky and earth as in the land. We're talking about the spiritual beings like the ghosts, the gods, the um, spirits. They were always trying to prank or not prank, punish the people who are full of themselves and always trying to benefit those people who are humble, or who are uh, keeping a low profile, who are not trying to be showing off. And human, us, they always hate someone who was too full of themselves. Don't like someone who are too of themselves. Dislike um, arrogance and always respect those who are humble. Always, um, people who are humble, you, you feel very comfortable with that person. They don't put it in your face all the time, right? This is more relatable. We are humans. Uh, someone who are full of themselves, you can see, even having a meal with them is so unbearable. They will be talking everything just about themselves every time you're trying to bring out a topic. It's all about me, it's about me. So reflect that, reflect on that. Therefore, in I Ching, there are eight gua, so eight opposites, just like what we read about the chapter three, the eight opposites of goods. I think he got inspiration from here. And this is also eight pairs. If you want to summarize phenomenon of the whole world, of the whole universe, they can summarize into eight pairs, including science, guys, including biology or whatever, the history, sociological, psychological, biological, uh, scientific, and philosophic. Everything can be summarized into its eight gua. Obviously, I'm not profoundly learning about this, but uh, this is the summary I read. So everything has up and downs, like yin yang, right? And this is how the yin yang came from, by the way, guys. And 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 everything has its good and bad, they will always have opposites. When you have merits here, they will always have some faults there, something like that. They will, unless you Buddha. So um, 
normal people will always have that. But among that, there's only one gua, which is one of the signs. They are always positive. They will never be negative, which is hum humility. Liu yao jie ji. So in Chinese, it's called qian zi yi gua, liu yao jie ji. Um, in 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 a very simplified way, um, everything has every every phenomenon has its plus and minus. Some have more plus, some have more minus. Uh, but this one is only plus, no minus. So it, it, as you can see in the history, people who made or well, Chinese history, people who made huge achievements, like building a Han Dynasty, Zhang Liang, Mr. Zhang. And he, I think he read this as well. He's like, I finished. I helped this Emperor Liu Bang to build Mr. Liu, <laughs> Mr. Liu, Emperor Liu to build a nation. So the Han Dynasty is what we call Han Chinese here. So as you can see, it's a very powerful dynasty. So they built a, a, a whole nation out of that. And then they retreat from the scene. And and he don't take any dukedom or mar, uh, marquis or any, any sort of um, prestige or fame. He just hide without even knowing, without even informing him. He just he just hide from the planes, uh, hide from the public, no longer take the the prestige and honor that he deserves, hides and enjoy his little life in the mountains. So that person lives happily. Yes, he might not have the fame and whatever the merit, uh, fortune that we worldly people call. But do you know what happened after that? Because emperor every time, it's a historical precedent. It's always happening. Every time you build a nation, you will always kill all that people who help you to build a nation. Yep, that's what's happening all the time. Han, Ming, Tang, everything. They all ha have to kill all that um, Gong Chen, Sha Gong Chen. In Chinese, we all heard so much. Uh, because these people are fighting for with you. And when they build the nation with you, they have that influence. And as the absolute monarchy, you don't allow influence like that, sitting too long. Sitting too long, you will influence your next generation who inherit your throne. You become weak. Unfortunately, that's the president set and they will always be followed until the end of Qing. So, um, so this is what happened. Everyone was killed except him because he didn't take any position, dukedom, his son will not inherit anything. So he will not have any power influence over them hunt the royalties. So back to the hum humility, this is how in, in the big scale, this is how humility works. In modern times, I can think about US is George Washington. See, he might be the one who built the nation, but he do not take the title of king. He called Mr. President. I can I can think about US why it can hold itself uh, properly in the beginning is because of him. First thing is non-partisan. He don't play that uh, multi-party thing. He do not like that. I I read his profile. I just I know why U.S. is U.S. because of him. He he's the one who laid the foundation for the nation. And obviously the rest, whether it deteriorates like Roman Empire, it's just a matter of time. But I will talk about the why is he able to hold this nation amongst a world that are quite hostile because um, he himself he's humble as well. He don't. He don't want. He was given the suggestion to be called a king or anything, which is a high title, but he didn't. And he keeps himself low profile as well. He don't try to overtake this military power and that. He let course run itself. He only do what he needs to do, doing his job, and that's why he's worthy of respect, no matter what parties you are, especially in a polarized situation right now. So those are modern examples that we can relate to, and these are great peoples who did humility well and ends up creating at least a, a, a period of time where uh, a, a, something can be built on for our nations and stuff like that. So back to normal people, us, the normal people. Um, over here, they talk about careers or imperial examinations. Uh, he say that in summary, arrogance brings four, pride brings uh, four. Pride comes before. Come, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Pride comes before one falls. I forgot there's a word. Like when you started to be proud, too proud of yourself, your date of your fallen time will be there. Where you failed is there. Um, so 
humility will always benefit every time, not without fail. So they, he used the example of his era, which is imperial examination. Every time they went into the exam, he will always look at these uh, scholars, look at their mannerism, behaviors, obviously at the site. So they are behaving naturally. And he himself is also part of the exam, like a uh, person who's going to sit the exam. And he saw his students, uh, classmates. He say someone called Jing Yuping, Mr. Jing, uh, Mr. Ding, sorry, Ding Jing Yuping. Mr. Ding is very young, but he's very, very hum humble, like natural, very humble. Um, he, most Delphan can see this because he himself has been cultivating a lot. So he's, he can see other people when they are really cultivating. And he's talked to other people, say, hey, look at this Mr. Jing, uh, brother, brother Ding. This year, he would definitely get one of the top marks. Back then, top marks means you have your whole family elevated the condition immediately. So how do I, everyone's like, what do you, why do you think that? And say, so look at him, the way he behave himself, carry himself. He's the person who can take in all that fortunes. Um, guys, what does it mean by taking all that fortunes? Shouldn't everyone want fortunes? Right? We all want good fortunes. We all want uh, good work, good job, good career progressions, uh, um, wealth and all that, uh, comfortable life. But why does he say he can take in this fortune? Why, why is it a, a thing? Because even good fortune itself needs someone deserving to have it. There's a saying that if your boat can only take five kilograms of gold and if you put in 10 kilograms, you will sink. Think like let, let that sink in. If you only ha if you only worth five kilograms of gold, and you take ten kilograms, you will sink. So the work is on building the making a boat baker, not getting more money in. Money you always come in. The problem is when it comes in, can you take it, or it will go out, or it will sink you, or your whole family with you. So going back to the historical example. So he say, among these 10 persons taking this exam, look at Mr. Ding, Ding Jing Yuping, Mr. Ding. Um, like anyone who is very, uh, how to say, putting others before themselves, considerate. Is there anyone as considerate as Mr. Ding? Walking, sitting, eating, always after people. Uh, Lao Tzu, right? Lao Tzu, Lao Tzu. I'll talk about, uh, there, I have three. In Buddhism, we call it, we have triple gem. He also had triple gem. That was pre-Buddhism in China. So I have also triple gem. Remember guys, that was before Buddhism come to China. Uh, I have, number one, um, frugal, being uh, save, uh, saving, uh, do not spend lavishly. So being frugal, being compassionate, loving other people, respect other people. And the third one is do not uh, dare to be the first in the world. Do not want to be the first in the world. Always number two, always number two. Letting other people go. So I have this three triple gem that keeps me at the peak of my cultivation. So this is how we do it. And this is how he do it. So is there is there anyone uh, who are really respectful in their speech, uh, who are uh, fearful in the in the sense of you know they don't they don't be reckless, uh, like Mr. Ding, uh, Ding, Mr. Ding, is there anyone who, when humiliated, uh, do not rebut quickly or re without rebutting? Is there anyone who could be humiliated without rebutting or be defamed or slandered without trying to uh, clear their name or without trying to debate as Mr. Ding? That means he can, he can hold this. He can hold this pressure without bursting. He can carry his composure and everything properly. That's that's a deep cultivation there, guys. If everyone can do that, everyone can do that. You know, even the heavens and the ghosts, not just human, heaven and, 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 and the heavenly realm people, or spiritual realm people, they will always protect this person. Or how can this person not be for, uh, not be fortunate? Right? We call fortunate, we call luck, guys. Where did that come from? Suddenly, uh, a random row of dice. No, guys, no. 
cause and effect, guys. Back to cause and effect. Always remember, if you have luck, if you have fortunate, fortunate, um, it's all because first thing is your past, but your present is the most important because present is a fused that leads the past to the present and to the to the whatever the results, right? You're the water to the seeds. Your your current life is the water to the seeds, the sunlight to the seeds, the air to the seeds. You're giving the condition for it to happen. So if you want to be luck and fortunate your whole life, um, learn from Mr. Ding, right? And to learn from him, first, you cannot be angry immediately. I already failed. So uh, to be able to take in the pressure of being misunderstand, misunderstood without, you know, because people who immediately rebut or, or answer, some most of the time they are very, how to say, fuzhao, whatever. They, they move very quickly. Like a little bit of word that does not sound right already can shaken this person. Can you think of this person able to achieve anything big? Something big happens, like maybe your company is going, to, going through the profit loss or global financial crisis. And if you're already like mess, uh, uh, if you're the CEO top of the company and you run, away, run around like the rest of the, uh, a worker, a worker did. Oh my God! What should I do? What should I do? How can you hold the ship? Or in the country, if you got a um, big problem, uh, say nine one one. I'm sorry, guys. This is very sensitive. And you got immediately jump for revenge and invade a nation that has nothing to do with the terrorists that attacks your nation. Can you see the consequences? Yes, twenty years spending in Afghanistan, drawing out without any result, and killing all your uh, fellow countrymen. Why am I bringing this in? Because this is a real example. I don't need to bring some old dy dy Ming Dynasty stuff. I bring 21st century stuff, guys. So, so what I'm trying to say is, if you can hold and release at the right time, at, at the appropriate time, that it takes a huge amount of patience. To have a huge amount of patience, you need to have a very deep stomach to take the it in. You have to, your heart has to be very uh, deep, very um. What is it? Tender to qi, patient. Uh, in, in Buddhism, we call it patience. Uh, Ren Wu Borromi, the parameter of patience. Um, in China, they don't say patience, but able to take in uh, rule, take in um, humiliation, patience against humiliation. Because Chinese people, they are like the face a lot. In a historic context, guys, I'm not talking about just now, I'm talking about since the ancient time. When the Indian monk comes to China, they look at these Chinese and say, there's a saying and say, as a government official, you can kill me, right? But you cannot humiliate me. I'd rather have my head severed than being humiliated. So they were like, okay, you like your face so much. You like your mingjie, your name so much. So this is the point you Chinese people need to cultivate when Buddhism comes in as a new stream. They were like, one of the homework you need to learn is to be patient against humiliation. So this one is big uh, in that terms. So uh, he can take it in and he can be careful he can, because his mind is stable. He can see things clearly. So I'm analyzing why is he deserving of such a big honor of, you know, Kao Zhuang Yuan, of getting the top marks and all the prestige and fame because he has that quality. Uh, if everyone can do that, yes, everything will be at your side. You will be able to take in all sorts of fortune and all sorts of pressure with a problem. So, when the result announced, he got it. That's it. He just said that he got it. And it, it was in Beijing. Um, and then he talked about other people able to so lean. So, I'm talking about qualities of people who are deserving of. Um, Merits. So this person is hum uh, Mr. Ding is very humble. He's very careful. At the same time, he can withstand slanders without uh, jumping at it straight away. Um, because sometimes this kind of slander, like what Leo Fan talked about in the first chapter, is like taking the flame against the air. One day it will go away. If you're trying to rebut against that or trying to debate against that, it will get muddy and muddy and muddy. It's trying to use your muddy hand and trying to wipe clean something. 
I forgot the the, the other metaphor. But the thing is that um, sometimes you just leave it, let it die itself. And there are other people, Mister Feng. Uh, he also can take in. Uh, he go. He can hide his um, talent at the, uh, un, uh, without showing it unnecessary. So Lian, Xu Ji Lian Rong, Da Bian Qi Yu Nian Zhi Xi. So he can um, empty himself, uh, not full of himself, not full of whatever he's good at, and uh, he can um, hide. Uh, not hide, he can, uh, uh, how to say, so I don't know how to say in, Ch in Chinese, in English. Um, low profile, yes, keep a low profile. Uh, in, in his young, di young days, Mr. Fong was a bit more, um, uh, maybe arrogant or maybe more showy, show offy. Uh, so, other case, Mr. Lee as well, um, Li Ji Yan. Uh, so he has a friend who, uh, very straight, like immediately criticize him in front of others and all that. Like what you did wrong, why you're not good and all that. Um, yeah, right in front of his face and in front of everyone. He's just talk about his weakness and all that. And he can take and he can take it without a, a face of anger. Like he doesn't have a face of anger. He can take it. Uh, and then he doesn't even mention the word. Imagine someone just stand in front of you, in front of all your family and colleagues or that and they just talk about all your problems and all that and then you can just smile and take it in without a word mm. so he give another summary uh, every fortune has its beginning so we can see how this person begin to have fortune and also every disaster has its beginning you can see how every disaster has its butt buddings coming out like when these people are behaving like that you can see already uh, you can deduce yes like Sherlock Holmes you can deduce what happened these are all doable guys these are all doable they are not some magical property in our sense it, it can be learned and you and if you are very very adept at examining yourself and able to cultivate very good at controlling your emotions and harness it properly and and, and cultivate, we call it cultivate properly. Um, then when you look at other people, you immediately know what kind of people is this, what kind of people is this. You don't need to think about it. You just see, you understand, you see the uh, historical uh, behavior of this person and then see, you can deduce where this person is going. Same thing. So this is very interesting. Um, all these fortune and disasters, they are all together. You know, Hu Xi, Huo Xi, Huo Xi, Fu Xi in Chinese. You know, right? there's a disaster, blessing in disguise. In disaster, there's a blessing in there. And if there's a fortune, there's disaster hidden in there, if not managed properly. So if your heart is prop is truly humble, it's it's um it's not full like a mountain, but as deep as a valley, able to accept everything, then definitely you will be repaid in fortune. Tian Bi Bao Zi. So he talked about this person definitely got the got a good good karma, I mean good fortune of passing the imperial examination. And then he brings out other cases like Zhao. Um he um oh yeah. So Mr. Zhao himself he, he wrote because you have to write essays in the exam. And when he wrote the exam uh essays, um his uh Father, I think. Okay, so anyway, so he he wrote an essay trying to submit it to the examinations to pass the vetting, and someone just ex, uh, someone I think very talented in words just come and corrected his words, it's just saying that you're very bad at this editing. Basically, come into your heart. Uh, like book and then just say this does not make sense this is not good and all that but that person is very good at that and he didn't just say it's not good he just goes straight ahead obviously there's no eraser back then they use the brush and stroke and say this article does not make sense uh, mr Zhao was like he didn't feel erupted he didn't feel shock he's very calm he takes it very well and it's like oh thank you thank you like if someone imagine you finish an essay, maybe a thesis, after three months, uh, bring in the modern context, just three months, and then you put it there, and then your father maybe invited someone who's very good, 
uh, editor and stuff like that, or someone very good, proficient at, at writings, he come in front. And then he didn't just say anything. He just come in, take a pen, have a look, strike, 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 strike. And and all these three months of hard work is there. And then they, they just strike like 90% of it or something. He's like, this is not good, this is not good. So normal people were like, can we take it in? That's the test. Can we take it in? He can take it in. And he, he take it in very well. He's like, I will change immediately. He take it very well. He absorb all his advice and his change. Next year, immediately, he got into the examination. And before this happening, because he has been failing the examination every year, a long time. So his father's like, oh my God, I need to find someone to help him lift him up a bit. And this is the test, not just on his word. Word is secondary. It's the heart. If the heart is right, your word will reflect you, your heart. So this is a lot of wording, writing. It's important. The people can see through your um, heart from the way you write because it's bro a brush stroke, guys. And trained eye, we can see it. This guy is very rushed. You get the way he writes. And then when you write all the contents, the, the logical lining of your words, it's like, something like that. Like if, if your word is not making sense, they will know like your heart is messy. How can you run a country like that? No, go. It's very strict. So, so this is what happened. And yep, same thing. People who are very uh, humble, they don't act. What he told people are naturally emitting a humbleness. They don't. They are not full of themselves. I think we all know. Like when you meet someone like that, they they are just like that. They are not. They are not acting or anything. They are just humble. I also want to confess a bit. Like I get a little bit too doubtful of people, and I need to learn from this. Like see things as they are. You know, people sometimes are just like that. Um, just because we learn about chapter three that they are not always on the surface doesn't mean that we need to like guess. Mm, is this wasn't real or fake? No, I think I I, I have a conclusion that um it's an opinion that we need to see things as it is. Like yes. This person might be faking it or not, doesn't matter. If that person is truly humble, you will know. And they, they will show it through their actual everyday life, whether you see or not. If this person is not, it's just putting a face, eventually you will have to be facing a test. Everyone has to be tested. And that test you will not pass if it's not real. So be real and, and learn what is real. And then you will carry on to your next life or pure land. You still need it anyway in pure land. Um, that's it. So I'll pause, I'll pause here. These are these are these examples that I do not um, have a heart to skip. I think every single one of them deserve proper contextual understanding, in depth, because those are very useful. Especially we have a lot of smart people nowadays. I'm summarizing now, guys. Sorry for the overtime. Um, there's smart people everywhere. Okay, there are genius people everywhere. Master Shield women mentioned those people created something that creates a new era. IT, technology, spacecraft. That's are smart people. But why are we still lacking the elements that make us truly a global superpower village, something like that, like bond us together? Because we're lacking this internal practice. In Chinese, we call Nei Gong, internal Kung Fu. External Kung Fu is like science, technology, um, philosophy, and all that. But internal Kung Fu, reflective, contemplative, and aura and virtues, that the quality, inner quality, that we will make good use of this external effort that we have been made for over 400 years of scientific achievements is lacking. So in order to be a civilization, I'm talking about big scale, worthy of all these uh, Edge, like to, if you want to be as good as a civilization uh, of Earth, then we need to have that quality, that depth of for, uh, that can carry this much fortune. Otherwise, disaster will happen, war will happen, and all that all that pain will happen. So, the first thing we need to learn is humility. Be humble. Learn from the past. How these people have created golden age. Understand that there are always negative. Obviously, there are. Of during that period of time in just, but we also need to learn from them because there's a lot of um, understanding. I, I think it's better now, nowadays, 
But back in 1800s and 1900s, we are all very looking down on the past people. We think of them as apes. Not thinking that if that person ha- can manage to achieve like maybe one era of golden age or a, a relative peace for 300 years, amongst all that pressure, internal politics and external problem, what brings them together? So this is something we need to, as a modern people, we need to be humble. We need to learn what's good from them and then apply in our current um, dry out uh, politics, dry out, um, dry out civilization. We dry out internally because we keep chasing outside. We're lacking something that can regenerate a, a new achievement as a, as a, as a whole global. No, no more China, no more US, whole global, global civilization, basically. And that's what Master Ching Kong's wish is, and that's what my, I aspire to follow. It will not be in my generation, it will not be in my grandchildren's generation, it will be another few hundred years. But what we're trying to do right now is just to plant the seeds, to get that idea out, west, east, north, south, wherever, and trying to build that consensus gradually over hundreds of years and eventually i hope that we have that consensus of five precepts ten meritorious deeds or ten commandments or that then and it becomes usable in a modern practical manner and at the same time we have our internal rejuvenation like we have can we are creative insight no longer dead and blunt as the signs have portrayed our universe we are just a rock, and that's the rock. There's nothing in there because we only see what we see, right? Which is very narrow. Our, even our color spectrum is narrow. <laughs> our our hearing decibel is narrow, guys. There's so much we don't see. There's so much we can't see. We need something, some myth or not myth, some legend that's part of our era that belongs to everyone. So going back to the reality, it has to start from this basic Kung Fu. So, you know, changing destiny, changing your destiny, changing your family destiny, changing your country destiny, changing your earth destiny. It all takes this step to go. You know, someone else to guide you, learn the guide, learn what you need to do, reform, learn to accumulate uh, the merits and learn to hold the merits, learn not to show off the merits, learn not to attach to the merits, learn when to release the merits. It will, it will, it will, it will create fruition by itself. But we just need to keep accumulate deep, deep, deep merit, so that next generation who reborn into this world, they will, people will the same level of merit. They will inherit the merit that you have accumulated. And yeah. Anyway, so thank you so much. Um, that's all I want to say. Uh, I might stretch a little bit for this one, but. Uh, just trying to show you how powerful we can be if we able to you know use this properly the potential is endless and the historical precedent is there um it's just the mindset we need to change a bit uh we are not lacking talent we're not lacking resources yes we have population growth and all that problem but trust me it it's not a problem when it's managed and to manage you can't have someone else imposing. This is not the era anymore. It has to be automatic by yourself. Individuals learn what your role is and work together. This is what democracy is. Everyone learned their own responsibility, not just the privilege, the responsibility towards this family, this relationship, these children from there, not the nation that's too big. And then to current community, and then you talk about nation. We need to go back to that. And when we get that right and implant that into next generation and pass down, only then we can have the very strong bond. But um, we start from what we start, like talking about this, getting aware of this. And then we can talk about practice uh, as we go. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, sorry for overtaking 15 minutes, extra 15 minutes of your life. Um, is there any things uh, I could improve or anything I've said wrong or you not disagree, please point it out. Um, I'll try to uh, bring it into the topics and 
because ultimately my goal is just to make these teachings that are hundreds or thousands years old, make it again, alive again in our time. That's my that's my vow as well. So it has to be reflecting everyone as much as possible. Uh, me to for May the merits and virtues accrue from this work, adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion, and leave the teachings for the rest of this life, then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. I'll read over one by one, step by step. Take care of yourself, guys. Bye bye.